Welcome back to the Telegraph PMQ's analysis. Now, that was quite the session then, wasn't it, Chopper? It yes, was. it was. It, it, could have, uh, it could have been more interesting, I think. Um, the NHS came, as well, we predicted. It came, and, and Theresa May gave her state lines out about uh, the NHS, and mm. Corbyn gave out his lines, not really answering either question. I, I mean, mean, it did seem <laughs> to predominate, though, the leader's questions in that way. I mean, yes. uh, sort of, in, in the same point, Theresa May revealed the Conservative defence on health, yes. which is to go, but Wales. So and early on Wales. Too early. Question two on Wales, rather way to the end. Wales, of course, don't forget, uh, viewers, is, uh, has had a rocky record on the NHS. Mm. Labour government there, so the government's happy to talk about Wales quite a lot when the NHS comes up. I thought, A, you know, we all groaned in a press gallery. Mm. It probably plays well outside the bubble we work in, but I think it was a bit of a weak answer. I think she... Because um, then they got to an argument about Welsh investment and, you well, know, under, underfunding Wales, and that, that, again, people would be turning off, you it can It did imagine, show, but. on strategy, it shows how effective Corbyn can be yes. going on his six question on one issue, right? Mm. That's good. He was gave, he gave a long speech at the end, mm. you know, very good. Clip it nicely for Facebook, that'll be yeah, happening. He gave a nice one as well. Yeah, that'll clip for the Tory yeah, Facebook. Yeah. But what do we learn? Well, not, not that much. Too much yeah. And, and it, that's it, the problem with that thing. I mean, if, I, if, if you if you or our viewers or me mm. had one question to ask the PM every week, I'd make sure it counted. Mm. But I think we saw some shockers today. But it's just a restatement of policy in that yeah. sense. And I mean, all in all, from that point, the NHS was, uh, well, the person who wasn't there, Boris Johnson, yeah. you know, he may well be kicking himself now because having brought, or even then, he may not necessarily be kicking himself, but Downing Street may want to kick him, given <laughs> that. For uh, giving the open goal to Jeremy absolutely. Corbyn. Absolutely. Five days ago, he signposted the ambush, not an ambush, his mm. kind of attempt to get in the news again. And then, of course, J Jeremy Corbyn picked up the ball, put the rubber ru ru ball off him, Boris, and then and went from there. Knocked over the bar, I think. But that's the thing. It's a, it, it was very workmanlike as an exchange. You could see it coming. You could see that Wales would come in. There'd be the defence. There'd be the powering and the back and forth. But then, obviously, there were some still quite right, some howlers of questions that were just clunkers. I mean, well, w w should we name him? Yes. He's called David Ennett MP. He's a former sports minister, Ennett yeah. 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 MP. Yeah. Yeah. He asked the PM whether the pursuit of sport is good for health and well-being. Mm. Now, and now the PM—that's a tricky one. But I think she a hard agreed. one. She may have agreed. I mean, what an absolute shocker! What's the point? What's a scoop of these people asking these questions? I don't know what's going on. Because but I mean, do you think sport's good for wealth and yeah, health and well-being? It's a real zinger. Yeah. Why are you asking me on air? I can't ask you I mean, we're going to get it's, it's, yeah, it's too, too hard to tackle in that sense. Because this is the, the quality. I've got the skills to these questions. I mean, you need to be briefed by the civil service exactly. before that. I need, yeah. I need a uh, note to answer it. I mean, because clearly he just wants the four sports agenda. But even though it's, it's the quality yes. of the back bench contributions. You're thinking, what, what was the point? Well, we you can know. see Damien Green ask a question. Now, Damien Green, don't forget, viewers, was mm. uh, sacked by Theresa May just a few weeks ago. He was quite big in government. He was quite big. Possibly even number two in government. Yeah. Was sacked, um, as we know, over the issue of pornography on, on computers. Mm. Uh, and he, he denies uh, any wrongdoing. In fact, denies it even happened. But mm. he was found to, well, he was found to. I was listening very hard to see if someone would shout something untoward, though. It was a heckle. Yeah, there was sense, little. You know. We couldn't pick it up on our microphones. Maybe in the mm. House of Commons mm. we'll hear later. But there was no heckling. Uh, but he asked about the Lower Thames crossing, mm. which, you know, if you're being naughty, you would say is a bridge line and is a dig at uh, Boris Johnson's plan to But he said one bridges are very fashionable now. Ooh, yes, yeah, yeah, and dig at It's easier asking than answering them. He made yeah, a joke. Yeah, yeah. So, but he was there. And he got a big cheer from male Tory MPs. Happy to see him back, don't forget. Mm. So, any female cheers? Didn't see any, no. Yeah, and yeah. it was a kind of what did you know? Well, they felt almost they had to cheer him. Mm. But I think you know he's got a, a bit of a way to go before he's back in natural on the front line of politics. I think probably oh, yes. past an election, get re-elected, and then start again. Yeah, I mean that's assuming he, you know he's still standing for re-election at the sense, given all know. the torrid time he's been having in that it's sense. It's been a difficult, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, good to see him. I mean, you know, the guy deserves a second chance, maybe, and it's good hmm. to see him on. Asking and absolutely, again. absolutely. But then at the same point with the rest of the, so there are some backbench questions like that. You know, Damien, which is very sort of worthy, yeah. and at the same point, you know, John Howell, no, no, not John Howell, never John Howell, David Evanett, Correct. which was uh, very much uh, predictable, uh, or a real sort of mastermind of a question. Yes. Um, but then, was there anything else that leapt out for you then? Because we had the NHS. Yeah, about, about some, you know, people dying, on, dying in ambulances seemed very shocking, and she yes. was concerned about it. Um, and that did seem very sort of, you know, having to handle the emotional impact of those sort of questions and how obviously Jeremy Hunt was sort of nodding very sagely in the back, <laughs> you know. Sort of, she had to want to move the conversation on, you know, change it back to Wales in a sense. Mm. And at one point, <coughs> Philip Hammond had a weird hand gesture yes. in the background. You know. well, this is going back to almost the, the days of Ed Balls mm. with his famous sort of trending up or trending down. Flatlining. And that became a sort of Nazi row very quickly, unfairly yes. on balls. Uh, it was definitely unfairly on balls. Yeah, he was saying uh, he was doing this, wasn't he? 
Well, we just was it was he riding like, a horse? It seemed to be like a little dancing up and down or yeah, sort of fishing rod. You didn't know, work at all. Weird. Yeah, he's got a weird long face that you can't hear what he's saying anyway, and mm. he's doing this a lot. But then lip readers on Twitter seem to think ah. that he was trying actually to do more of a kind of you know money sort of oh f- spend money it. yeah and saying oh ah. print more money sort of thing. It was more like a sort of jiggling up and down. So like he wasn't that. reading in or riding a horse, but he's yeah. spending money. I mean, he needs to practice yes. I think, with his gestures. We know <laughs> yes. that because if we get confused, yes. the viewer even more so. He needs to practice quite a lot, I think. Mm. I being human might be a help. <laughs> you are true. And, and answering no. sort, of, sort of straightforward questions. And, and About the NHS. And yes, sort of and, and showing his true Brexit colours. They're well, hidden yeah. for a lot of us. I mean, because when he was in Davos, and obviously uh, <laughs> decided to inform viewers with that sort of David Evanet style wit that the, the Foreign Secretary is the Foreign Secretary, not the Health Secretary. You're yes, thinking, or, well, Mr. Mr. Johnson, he said, which yes. of course was intended to put distance between him and Boris Johnson, even though, of course, they're Boris and Phil, mm. if they're having a drink together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, y- yes. Do they have drinks together, though? I think they might share, you know, the odd, the odd cup of coffee at cabinet. Mm. That, that, that counts as a drink. Oh, fine, yeah. But yeah. never, never sort of, they don't enjoy In the warmth of each other's banter. They don't have dinner, these things. No, I think bants is quite hard to find between Boris Johnson and Philip Hammond. Mm. But then they are, I guess, across the, across the Brexit divide, in a sense. So that yes. sort of seemed to be why he sees red Philip yes. Hammond about this, in a sense. Because it struck me that with, with Hammond's slap down, as it were, mm. you know, of, of Boris, Jeremy Hunt said earlier this month that the NHS needed, quote, significantly more funding. Yes. Chancellor, well, silence. No, no slap down there. No <laughs> yes. rebuke there. But Boris, oh my word, you know, yes. he's the Foreign Secretary. Well, maybe, maybe Get in your lane. Well, Philip Hammond knows that if Boris Johnson replaces Theresa May, he's out. <laughs> so he's definitely got his tie, his mark. And anything which sees Boris rising a bit mm. feels very happy to knock it, knock it down again. Mm. Um, SMP went on the, the RSB, RBS closures, yes. which is about the bank. It's a state owned bank or state, mm. state controlled bank, I should say. Closing branches in Scotland, big issue up north. Mm. Theresa May gave a kind of classic Tory response. Yes, saying that we don't manage it. We they don't manage it. People yeah. aren't going to them as much. Mm. So therefore, mm. there's a question of breaking even on some of these. And then, quite, I thought, well done, Theresa, for mentioning or remembering that the post office now does, does allow mm. banking services through branches, and that is a protected network. Mm. But you could almost feel her desperately trying to find a way of mentioning a jibe about flags. Well, it never know, came so up. Well, no, 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 no. So this great thing shame. stuck on banks in a sense. Yeah. And those who ha- haven't seen today's front page of the Telegraph, that's all about the fact that uh, Nicola Sturgeon has, is cutting a number of times the Union flag is flown above government buildings in Scotland mm. to one, Remembrance Sunday. Mm. Otherwise, they, they, fly, they fly the lion rampant. Mm. Uh, which is the Scottish uh, line uh, on, well, on the Although she's flag. been contesting this adamantly on Twitter. Yes, sort of suggesting I think that. wrongly, actually. Well, I think know, it's, it's pretty it's clear what the rules... It's part what, of what the, the S&P rules. bluster, at least. Yes. And, uh, there was a lot of, it seemed that way, in my view, with, with the questions on the RBS, actually. Obviously, I don't doubt their sincerity of their care and concern, but it, it did seem they were playing to the home crowd. They wanted to say, why don't you just, you know, stop them closing? And then I know. government would say... Again, it's another yeah. example, probably, of, of, a, of the same question asked again, hmm. but plays well on Facebook doesn't inform the chamber. I mean, you've got a, there's a lot of wasted air today in the chamber when we haven't really moved on mm. at all. When there are other areas they could have gone on, I thought, you know, there were missed opportunities, um, uh, the, this big row about this dinner in the city and, and whether mm. sexism claims, that's an interesting area, wasn't touched on. I think there were... Uh, there I thought are, someone would have really teed up a question there for the PM. You know, mm. sort of, do should love to have gone for it, because yeah. she would want to condemn that, that, that behaviour, as reported in the FT. Mm. Mm. But then it's a, it seems to be some missed opportunities in a sense. Whether the sort of the Tory whipping operation hadn't really uh, gone in sort of professionally for this time, it, it seemed uh, lethargic as a result. Yeah, it, it, uh, yes, and it shouldn't really because it's the start of a new year. I mean, mm. you, that's almost like a pre-Christmas December yeah. Prime Minister questions. Didn't feel like anything like the energy you require. Mm. And, and there's a lot of play at the moment. We've got the Brexit talks ongoing. Absolutely. We've got this clashing. You know, I mean, really important, I think, uh, earlier before Brexit this, did come up. Actually, it always it comes up to a degree, but it, but it was no, nothing new. In a well, sense. I think so, what we are going to see is you're a skeptic about benches mm. starting to test strips out of Theresa May mm. on Brexit. Now we saw today with Jacob Rees-Mogg against David Davis saying we're going to be a vassal state if you mm. if you mm. give in, and there'd be a lot more of this kind of the ERG, this European Research Group of Tory MPs, sixty mm. of them led by Jacob Rees-Mogg, putting exocets aimed straight at Brexit cabinet ministers. This is the start of a theme in the first quarter I mean, of this I mean, year. But then conversely, some uh, pro-EU types were drawing on this old David Davis article that they've drawn out of him suggesting we should stay in the customs union. Well, oh, five years ago he said this. It's yeah. 2012 news. I mean, and that was then, this is now, even, I mean, you know, goodness, I, I, I can, I have the badge. I went mm. to the, the David Davis blueprint on Brexit, mm. which he issued in March 2016. Mm. And I was there with about five sketch writers, no, no other reporters there. Mm-hmm. I have, I'm a fellow traveler with David Davis, and he said lots of things then, which of course, you know, it's, it, it, things have changed. Five yeah. years ago, 
It's pretty hard. To In his phrase, that. that was then. This well, is now. I think that's pretty fair. Fair, fair, fair enough. But I then, you know, they I mean, no, one knew, the... no one even knew then that there was a customs union mm. and a single market, and they were different. Mm. Because this, this, this difference, mm. which is obviously terribly important, never came up mm. when we were members of the European Union. I mean, to his credit, he at least <coughs> knows, and obviously now he's the man having to preside over the departure process. Mm. But it does add fuel to the fire for Remainers, because they can say, well, he's clearly changed his mind. Oh, dear. So why can't Britain? Well, look and at Jeremy Corbyn's record on it. Yeah. And well, now, there's no, a record? No one <laughs> knows well. He's obviously a Brexiteer. I won't say it. I mean, there's all sorts of these kind of mm. here, there, who means what. I mean, you know, Jeremy Hunt ch changed his mind. Well, the recently, um, D Tony Blair, obviously the Corbyn arch enemy, uh, did say <laughs> that he believed Corbyn was pro EU. Yeah. You should take him at face value. He believes in Father Christmas, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this, look, you just cross your fingers and hope in a sense. <laughs> you know, there's the sincerity in it. Um, it, it. Well, I mean, it's not, it is not clear what Labour's policy is after two years after Brexit. They yes. want to stay in single market and customs union to the point at which we have to do something about that and that's near yeah. enough to the election for them to fudge it. it it's an absolute um, well, they weren't trying it's to a mound it. of fudge. Exactly and the thing is the fudge has been carefully kept away in the cupboard for this PMQs yes. but then was there anything else that really it's, left, it's, well, preserved. it's been sort of a, a, block, a very icy fudge in icy a sense. Fudge, yeah. You'd have to pickaxe at it in a <coughs> yes. sense but then besides that metaphor may I mm. say was there anything else that really leapt out of you from this PMQs? We have, we have David Avenet's absolute <coughs> howler, <laughs> lead balloon of a question which you know really you know listeners and viewers if you are having particular answers do feel free to tweet us if you do think sport is good for your health, or if you don't, we also would love to know to carry on that debate. There was, uh, the, I mean, the house is always very good at moments which break the silence and, and mm. sort of and the jarring moments. I thought when um, the, the, the praise for Baroness Jow, Tessa mm. Jow, who has brain cancer and talked very movingly on the radio this morning, that was a moment. Mm. It was moving. I mean, John Berger then had to get in there and say why he thought. Mm. Uh, Tessa Jow was a great person. Everyone agrees that non-controversial because mm. he has to make it about him, which is all fine. And that's mm. John. John Berger I guess he thought he had to speak for the house on this. Well, perhaps he did, and then in that case, we'll, we'll, let's give him the credit for that. Yeah, he spoke yeah, for yeah. the house. But I think Theresa May also spoke, spoke for the house, and she's prime minister. And so questions, but mm. yes, yes, she did. So, uh, and I think it was totally moving what Tessa, Tessa Jow said on the radio to Nick Robinson today. And mm. um, you know, I think that was a good, a good, a good one. You know, that's an, an, on a happy note with with uh, with PMQ. At least a somber note, but a note when the house mm. appeared you know, the, the, the best it can be. Yes, it was sort of <coughs> Parliament at its best, in a yeah. sense, rather than just Parliament, at, you know, it's the Yabu derivative. Politics. The Yabu, moving away from that completely. And sort of, I think it's all on that sort of nice note, in a sense, of seeing that the PMQs can elevate itself. And she spoke its, personally its, about smear tests, too. Yeah. And saying how important they are, I have them, it's not comfortable. It's, it was a bit a rare bit of humanity from Theresa May. Often you get her pushing back in anything about her person, mm. herself, the injections she has for diabetes, these mm. are very things she doesn't talk about. But I thought she just, Gave, gave a bit away. Like, gave yeah. a bit away about you know a bit of empathy for women. Hmm. Not not easy. Not nice doing smear tests. Very important for I I think, health. Yeah, that we we learned a new side. We saw a new side to her character. Slightly. In her manner. Yeah. And it's we want to see more of that. We want to see more of her sharing. Mm. And she and she appears to hate sharing. Mm. Does it through you know gritted teeth? But I think just it's not like I'm like you. I'm a human being. Mm. I'm a woman. I would do these. You should do it. That was really. A bit different from Theresa May. Mm. Not what you expect from her at the dispatch box. Well, I think we now know the, the inclusion, uh, PM, or if any of your team are watching, you know, is it, feel free to be, you know, more share. yourself. Share. The sort of share. MPs are appreciating that, as as are we. But then, um, so thank you, otherwise, then viewers, for tuning in uh, to our uh, so PMQs post chinwag, and um, feel free to tune in next time. There'll be many more PMQs fests to come. Can't Good. wait. Bye bye. Bye.